name is Melissa Fry, and I'm curator of invertebrates at the Royal BC Museum. I uh, became interested in invertebrates primarily during my early graduate work. Um, I am very interested in questions related to evolutionary history and biogeography. Eventually, if, if we learn enough, we may even be able to use that information to protect certain areas of the world. As a curator, um, I work heavily with the collection and I have a research program, but we are also involved in public programming and exhibits, and we do a fair amount of um, exhibit development. We provide the content, the scientific content, um, including text and images. I spend a lot of time sampling, going out collecting organisms that um, might be of interest to me or the collection or my work. We actually deploy a settling plate. Simply these, these plates just simply sit down in the water column for months on end and eventually over time organisms will settle out of the water column and settle onto the plate and begin growing. And after a few months we have an entire community which, which we refer to as a fouling community. And I spend a lot of time in the lab looking at the collections, processing the collections, working on manuscripts, and working on life desks related to my EOL work. As a Rubenstein Fellow, I work on two separate life desks. I have the Neurotopsine gastropods life desk, which is a group of snails commonly known or referred to as nearite snails. And during my PhD, I had the wonderful opportunity to interact with another malacologist, Mr. Tom Eichhorst, who is a world-renowned expert in nearites. And so I contacted Tom early um, when I started developing this life desk because I knew that he had data and particularly images that um, I thought he might be willing to contribute. I was able to convince him to contribute those images and so he has contributed literally hundreds of images for different species, which is why probably that life desk has become so successful. Uh, to date, we have over 30 members, contributor members, active members on that life desk. I also have a separate life desk that the title is Marine Invaders of the Northeast Pacific. And this life desk focuses on non-native species um, that range all the way from Alaska to Baja, California. Collaboration has been a really big part of my work at Encyclopedia of Life. It can be overwhelming if you think about it that you have, you know, 300, 400, 500 species pages that you need to tackle. And that can be, um, seem like a, a bit overwhelming. Um, getting other people involved though, I think is probably a key to success in terms of feeling like you're actually accomplishing something. So my involvement with other contributors has been um, hugely successful. It's actually made me feel like, wow, I'm actually getting something accomplished. Even the smallest university towns or institutions are bound to have some sort of natural history society and those people are very passionate about nature, they're passionate about natural history, they're passionate about organisms, groups of organisms, and those um, groups of people I think are really important to EOL. I wrote a short article for one of the local natural history societies newsletter, monthly newsletter, that focused just strictly on Encyclopedia of Life. The other thing that I've done is I've given talks at natural history societies and I'll be going to a shell club meeting in Seattle and giving a talk to that group about Encyclopedia of Life. I tend to focus on more traditional means of outreach, things like writing um, short articles or, or giving talks. If you're a new member, my advice to you would be to connect to your communities early on and understand that you are not in this alone. You never know what, what's going to come out of any of your outreach activities. Sometimes they lead to really amazing collaborations or you'll meet um, a researcher who you've talked to about Encyclopedia of Life, but you, turn, you find that you're interested in similar research questions that can really turn into a, a really nice collaboration. So one thing that you can do is you can, the institution that I work for is embraced my involvement with Encyclopedia of Life. And so for me, it is something that I can include as part of my research program. And so I definitely will be able to continue to work on Encyclopedia of Life for years to come.